We'll begin with sketch six. The importance of this plate is that it shows us how to draw elliptical shapes representing round shapes. We want the elliptical shape to appear in our isometric view um, representing the circular shape from our orthographic view. I'm going to start with the um, very top up here and going back to the example here to take a look I realize that there are actually four radius points here to construct this ellipse. And I also notice that this isometric ellipse is going to appear in relation to the parallelogram. In other words, its orientation is directed by the parallelogram. When I move over to problem A, here's my parallelogram. Notice my two center marks and center lines for my circle are now not perpendicular to one another as they appear in the orthographic view. When I take the radius of the original circle, I can see that it, it orients the parallelogram relative to the center lines. So once I have the center lines in, the parallelogram follows, and then the elliptical shape. What I want to do is imaginatively go to this corner here. These are what I call my closest corners. And imagining that I have a compass with a radius here, I'm simply going to draw what I call the flat arc that goes from one side to the other, from center mark to center mark. And then if this were my radius point for this arc, here's my other flat arc. My two rounded arcs are identified with a radius point here and here. And if you notice from my two closest corners, I'm drawing over here to the midpoint of the opposite side, to the midpoint of the opposite side, and my rounded end looks like this. And as you can see, it's not perfect, but it's a very good representation of the rounded shape that we're going to see in our orthographic views. Just to show you that this really does work, for problem B, I'll take a compass and I'm going to my, whoops, I'm going to my closest corner to the closest corner. I'm going to strike that radius. I'll move it to the top radius point. I will strike that curve. And then I will take my compass. I will shorten it. And here is one rounded end. I'm off just a little bit with a compass. And here is my other rounded end. But rather than taking the time to draw that with my compass, I'm going to use this parallelogram method and sketch them in. When I move to problem C, I'm trying to establish the fact that in the top view, my parallelogram is oriented differently in a different direction than it is in the left face and in the right face. In the top view, like problem B above, here is my closest corner, here is my arc. And again, I call that the flat arc. If I use this as my radius, I notice that I'm going to draw my flat arc on the opposite side. From the closest corner to the midpoint of the opposite side, this would be my radius point. So that is my radius. And I'll draw that rounded. And imagining that I have a compass there, I draw it rounded. What I'm trying to avoid are flat corners like that. That's not what I want. I want them nice, full, and rounded. 
and the right face. This is my flat arc. Here's my other flat arc. And I have my two rounded ends that look like this. In the left face, my flat arc, my other flat arc, my rounded end, and my rounded end. It's very important that you realize that the parallelogram, depending upon which face you're in, is going to direct the orientation of the elliptical shape.